Hi, I'm Chris Spizak, and this is the Words You Should Know podcast. A few stolen minutes out of your day to talk words and communication, because our daily lives are surrounded by the evolution of and the influence of words. Forget the grammar police. There is so much more to this conversation. And as a reminder, a free download of fiction editing cheat sheets, family story writing references, and business communication tips are all available on my website, getagripponyourgrammar.com. Welcome to episode number 39, where we'll dive into the etymology and origin stories of gargoyles. Why gargoyles? Well, beyond the opportunity to talk automatopoeia and story characters turned architectural staples, sometimes it's fun to just close my eyes, open up a word origin dictionary, and put my finger down on a random page. Seriously. Hello, gargoyles. But things happen for a reason, folks, and I will get to that in a moment. First, here's the latest in word, language, and writing news. Best-selling author Stephen King took to Twitter last weekend asking for some grammar help. Anyone who has ever felt high and mighty about grammar, please take note. Everyone, yes, everyone, has moments to pause and think things out. When someone like Stephen King does so in a public medium such as Twitter, I am absolutely delighted by it. What started as a statement about the joy of movies that include tap dancing led to an intense debate of whether his sentence should be what America needs are more tap dancing movies versus what America needs is more tap dancing movies. And the grammarists, grammaristas, and grammarians of Twitter were off, including editors from prominent publishers. What would you say? What America needs are more tap dancing movies? Or what America needs is more tap dancing movies. Check out my show notes for more details on the debate. Since we started with a novelist, I'll also add today that the New York Times recently published an article titled, Still Stuck at Home? It Might Be Time to Work on That Novel. Brilliant idea? I'd argue so if you ever felt so inclined. Though perhaps I should end my news section today with a recent discovery and sharing of Douglas Adams's note to himself. Quote from the great Douglas Adams. Writing isn't so bad when you get through the worry. Forget about the worry. Just press on. Don't be embarrassed about the bad bits. Don't strain at them. Writing can be good. You attack it. Don't let it attack you. This was a note to himself. Yes, even the famed author of The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy had struggles with storytelling and the written word. Take heart if you ever have those moments. There are so many writing and communication news stories to share, like the fact that a company called Hugging Face recently raised $40 million for its natural language processing library. But we'll jump back into that merging of language and technology in a future episode. Today, we're not talking tech. Today, we're talking myth, fables, legends, paganism. Well, kind of. Today, in short, we're talking about gargoyles. What's the origin of the word gargoyle? Who are these guys and where did they come from in terms of story history? Fantasy readers, this episode might just be dedicated to you. Are you ready for this? I feel like this is where you're supposed to shout arg or something right back at me, but I think that might be more pirate than gargoyle. What does a gargoyle say? Maybe something profound, but I'll leave that up to you. Let's begin simply with the word gargoyle and its base, garg, which seems to be little more than an imitation of the sound that you might make in your throat. Awkward swallow, gag. I don't know how to make the right noise into the microphone, but you get the idea. The words gargle, gurgle, and regurgitate all come from the same automatopoeic root. And if you're curious, the word poetic is in fact hiding inside of automatopedic. Don't you love that? And I had to bring in poetry, folks. We're talking about bodily sounds here. So gargoyle comes from throat sounds, which moved through Greek and Latin eventually into Old French, where we had the word meaning throat. It's this Old French word, which took on the meaning of creatures used in drainage systems where the water would flow through their throats. Not all gargoyles on churches and other grand buildings serve this function today, of course. 
but since the 13th century, many gargoyles have preserved the stone walls of structures by diverting the water away with their own grotesque style. Now, structures that have diverted water through a creature's mouth of some sort was not an original idea to France in the 13th century when gargoyles as we might know them first came to be. The Egyptians had lion heads that had the same functions on buildings, and similar lion head water spouts even appeared on the Temple of Zeus in Olympia, Greece. But, and here is where the myth comes in, also in 13th century France, there was a legend, the legend of the man who had become Saint Romanus, who slayed a fire-breathing, water-spitting dragon to save his people. According to legend, Saint Romanus cut off the monster's head and neck and attached it to the church. Now this dragon, according to the story, had great bat-like wings, a long neck, and a mouth that snapped shut with a sound like a clap of a guillotine. All of the stories seem to mention this sound like a guillotine, which I do find particularly interesting because guillotines weren't actually invented for another several hundred years. However, similar devices were referenced in literature, so we'll let that one slide in the contemporary retellings. According to some traditions, stone gargoyles were representations of demons that one was supposed to avoid by coming into church. Evil outside the walls, holy inside the walls. Some sources argue that every holy symbol inside of a church can be balanced with symbols of evil outside the church to remind people of the narrow path they needed to tread to lead a good life. Some sources say that gargoyles were displayed to attract pagans to the church. I do love the rabbit holes you can fall into when it comes to stories. I also love the decorative non-water spout gargoyles in Somerset, England are also called hunky punks. Yes, hunky punks. There are so many fantastic creatures across cultures and across time, but gargoyles are one of the few stories that have become architectural traditions as well. What is your favorite mythical creature? And do you know its origin story? As always, contact me if you'd like to share what you know. For today's language challenge, since we're talking fantasy creatures, let's keep going in this vein. A maze and a labyrinth. They aren't actually synonyms. And yes, we could go back to mythology here again. What do you think? Mazes versus labyrinths. The answers, as always, can be found on my website at getagriponyourgrammar.com. Finally, for my personal update today, the fact that I closed my eyes and my finger landed on the word gargoyles in my dictionary of all other words just speaks to the idea that stories are everywhere around us characters, myths, ideals that trickled through history into our core beliefs. Stories are everywhere. Apparently gargoyles are everywhere. I found out that Pittsburgh really loves gargoyles. So go Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I have been doing some deep research into the nature of stories lately. Why certain tales take hold of us, why certain ideas become a part of the cultural zeitgeist, and what the effects of these stories are on us over time. Everywhere we turn, we hear stories in one form or another these days, right? And may I just say that while I am certainly aching for past days when I've been able to put on white gloves and go into dusty library archives, the simple nature of pursuing curiosity with an academic's eye is filling my soul at the moment. It is so good to tackle projects that fill your soul when you can. More on this soon. But what's filling your soul these days, folks? Great stories? The pursuit of writing? The pursuit of happiness or the happiness of pursuit? Whatever you're up to, keep at it. I'll have more words you should know soon. Are you curious or confused about the words you use every day? For more information on language news, trivia, tips, and explorations, I invite you to sign up for my monthly newsletter at getagriponyourgrammar.com. That's also a great place for free downloads and to learn more about my books, Get a Grip on Your Grammar, the Novel Editing Workbook, and the Family Story Workbook. Thank you so much to those of you who have taken the time to review or rate this podcast. And if you haven't, why don't you head over to wherever you listen and do so? I am so grateful for it. And as always, I invite you to share your latest writing updates and insights with me. I love hearing from you. Again, you can connect at getagriponyourgrammar.com. Until next time. 
words, language, communication. We've got this.